All right, um, Mr. Hampton, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. Would you introduce yourself, tell us your name and your DOC number, please? Jerry D. Hampton, 74972. Okay, and you are represented by council. Council, would you introduce yourself? Good afternoon, Ms. Renata. Jane Hogan here on behalf of Jerry Hampton. I'll make a statement at the end with the committee's approval. And thank you. Um, Mr. Hampton, you're here um, today. You're seeking a commutation of your sentence. Uh, you have convictions in Rapides and Orleans Parish. Now, let's see. You have first, it was a manslaughter in April 1973. Um, you received a 16 year sentence. We have in August, 1993, uh, believe in Rapid, second degree murder. You received a life sentence. And then in uh, 1984, there was a simple escape, uh, which you received a two year consecutive sentence. Does all that sound correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, let me acknowledge the folks who have joined us today. In support, we have the parole project. Um, Mr. Hunley will be speaking in support. Uh, Mr. Hampton's sister, Ms. Viola Hampton, will be speaking in support. And we also have joining us uh, there at uh, the penitentiary, Ms. Yvonne Hampton, your wife, and Byron Hampton, your nephew. Uh, here to speak in opposition, we have a representative from the DA's office, um, Derek Johnson, and we'll call uh, on Mr. Johnson at the appropriate time as well. Your case this afternoon, uh, Mr. Hampton has been assigned to Mr. Mayor Bella. Would you answer his questions? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Hampton. My name is, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Hampton. My name is Tony Mayor Bella. How are you today, sir? I'm doing fine, sir. Mr. Hampton, how old are you, sir? I'm, I'm uh, 69. Okay. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? 40 years. 40 years? Yes, sir. Mr. Hampton, I've, I've reviewed your record. Uh, it looks like you've done a lot of things while you've been in prison. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for a change, victim awareness, uh, 100 hours of pre-release. You're currently enrolled in GED, is that right? Yes, sir. I graduated from literature, so they moved me up to GED. And uh, Malachi Dads, uh, age your age, uh, you're a Class A trustee. You, you, you've done extremely well while you've been in prison. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be real honest with you. I've got some real problems with your crimes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what happened in 1973 in New Orleans. Uh, yeah, so tell me what happened there. Hey, my wife, we was we were separating. I wanted to go back home to the country. She wanted to stay in New Orleans. And I wanted to take the kid with me. She told me I could. When I went to now, get now let, me, let me ask you this, because I didn't really understand it from the record. Uh, was uh, Kiva your daughter as well? Daughter. OK, all right, go ahead. Sorry. So when I went to get the baby, and I, she opened the door, let me in. And when she let me in, she attacked me with a knife. We wrestled over the night, we fell on the bed, the baby got stabbed. And uh, And you actually went to trial or did you plead guilty to manslaughter? I pleaded guilty to it. And you worked out a deal where you went to jail for 16 years. That's up because did I was you wrong. Out on, I'm sorry? I was wrong. I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have even went there. Because after a proper thought, I should have never went there. So that I was wrong for that. Now, and how much time did you serve while you were in prison? Six years, six months, and 22 days. Did you take any kind of programs there? Did you do any kind of rehabilitation or anything else while you were there? No, sir. I, did, I couldn't. But I didn't, I didn't, I stayed here until 74, and then I did cemetery at CIS, so I went to cooking school down there. And that's where I started getting a certificate and stuff like that. Now, uh, were drugs or alcohol involved at all in, in this first incident in 1973? No, sir. Have you ever done drugs in the past? No, sir. Alcohol, do you ever drink? I drink. 
the 1973 incident that had nothing to do with drugs or alcohol. You went there, your wife attacked you, and you ended up killing your baby. That's right. Now you got out of prison. What did you do when you first got out of prison? I went, I got a job working at Delta Dex, sheet metal mechanic. I was a sheet metal mechanic for Delta Dex. I left Delta Dex, I went to Regency Motors. I did automotive work. Drugs or alcohol at that time at all? No, sir. Tell me a little bit about the bad blood between you and the King family, or your family and the King family. Tell me a little bit about that. They was having a dispute. My dad was involved. I intervened. I shouldn't have. I know I was wrong for that. That's why I'm shooting James. Shut James and kill him. Mr. Mr. Hampton, tell me how that happened. You say you wound up shooting him. Uh, did you go look for him? Did you find him? Uh, what happened? How did that happen? I didn't look for him. Well, did you have a weapon with you? Yes, I did. What were you doing with a weapon? I don't know. I was on parole and I shouldn't have even had a weapon. Weren't you prohibited from carrying a weapon on parole, to having a weapon on parole? Okay, so go ahead. And that's part of my problem. Go ahead. Tell me what happened. I found out shooting James and killing him. Well, wh where did you find James? How did you and James get to the point where you ended up shooting him? We was there. We was there already. We was on the spot right there. Was there. there. Where were you? We was in, uh we was in our chicken shack. It's a restaurant. All right. Okay. So you saw him in there? Yeah, sir. He was there. And you were carrying a weapon? Yes, sir. He was. How long had you been carrying that weapon? Not long. I just had it that particular night. And why did you have it that particular night? Because someone had shot in my car and almost killed my daughter because she was sitting on the armrest. And so, and when was that? That was, that was during the, that was happening that Thursday. And I wound up killing James that Friday. Okay, so where did you get the gun from? <clears throat> My brother-in-law. And so how did you end up at the chicken shack where James was? I had paid for some food there earlier, and I was coming back to get it. And when I came back to get it, James happened to be there. Okay. So tell me how it happened. How it happened that you shot him and killed him? Well, he drew his gun, and I drew mine, so we started shooting. Did you go to trial, or did you plead guilty? I went to trial. And the, I assume your defense was self-defense? No, sir. What was your defense? Well, as you know, Louisiana don't care the uh, self-defense law here in the state. So we just went to trial. I understand when you say Louisiana doesn't carry self-defense. Certainly it's a, it's a defense to defend yourself. I didn't know that. <laughs> Jerry found you guilty of second degree murder? Yes, he did. Was there ever a weapon found on uh, James? No, sir. Did he ever have a gun? I mean, there was no weapon found. He did. His sister took Nobody it. found one. His sister took it. You know, Mr. Mr. Hampton, I, I, I think I can understand don't agree with it, obviously, but I can understand how that first crime might have happened. And it sounds like a judge uh, in a DA was was sympathetic with what happened and, and agreed to a 16-year sentence on a manslaughter charge. You get out. Then you go and you kill somebody again. You arm yourself with the weapon. You know you're a convicted felon. And you go in there and you kill someone, someone you had bad blood with. You see my problem? Yes, I do. 
Now, tell me a little bit about this escape that you had a couple of years after you got arrested for that murder. Well, I was in, I was, we was on the dock. We was on, out on the dock. And then a girl came in and we tried to leave and go have sex in the bathroom. That's what it, that was about. They charged me with, with escape. Like I left the parish. I didn't leave the parish. Went in the elevator. And you pled guilty to simple escape and you got two years. Tell me what you think are some of the more important. You had indicated in your, your documentation that uh, victim awareness was the most important program that you had taken while you've been in prison. Tell me why that is. Because victim awareness is a class. It teaches you to understand what exactly all the people that you hurt. This thing, I hurt a lot of people, you know, and for that, I apologize for that especially to the King family. I didn't know the impact of what this thing had done to, the, to my community. M M Mr. Hampton, yeah. let me back, back up a little bit. You killed your own daughter. You didn't understand what it's like to lose a loved one to violence? Yes, I do. But I didn't understand all of this until I... You see these these classes I took. This made me understand. I'm not that same person forty years ago when I walked in here. They changed me. I don't know what it is, but they changed me. I'm not the same. Well, I I need you to try to tell me what it is that's changed you, because you're asking me to vote to I, to recommend to the governor that he commute your sentence. I need to know specific. I, not the pieces of paper. I need to know. What has changed you? What has gotten into your heart that makes you a different person today? That I can be, feel comfortable that you won't go out and commit a third killing. Because what I've learned, all, this, all the opportunity I've been given here taught me to be the man I am today. I, I can think rather than react. I can always take time to think, you know, and I'm gonna make, I can make good choices now. I, at first I couldn't because I didn't have the opportunity that I have today. Well, tell me some things other than victim awareness. Tell me some of the other classes that have helped you. I mean, you took Malachi dads, took a hundred hours of pre-release, thank him for a change. What did those, what specifically did those things do for you to make you realize that you're a changed person? Thank you for a change. I know I can stop and think, and that's the best weapon I can use. If I stop and think about it, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to make good choices rather than bad choices. Because everything that I do in life, I know I need to stop and think, think about where I'm going because there's consequences and everything. So think of a change is one of my things. You're a class A trustee. How long have you been a trustee? About, I think about 20 years. You lost it in 2005. I lost it a while and I got it back in 21 okay. days. Lost it for a short period of time and you got it back. Uh, you worked on the carpentry crew for 15 years, is that right? Yes, sir. And you were allowed to leave prison to go work in different places around around the parish or the state, is that right? Yes, sir. I did be uh, headquarters in Baton Rouge. I did you worked work on some schools as well, as I understand it? Yes, sir. Uh, you've had 22 write-ups uh, in the last 40 years in prison. The last one was in 2005. Uh, you got a good disciplinary record. You got a low tiger. Uh, law enforcement, obviously, is opposed to your release. Uh, the victim's family, two members of the victim's family support your release. The, the, uh, 
believe you've served uh, uh, enough time. Uh, Lionel King and Ms. Linda Harvey uh, support you. Uh, you were denied in 2015. What was the reason you were denied in 2015 when you came before this board? You remember? I don't believe I was ready until I got what I got today. I finished those classes and stuff. I think I'm ready now. I wasn't ready back then. I got what I need. Mr. Hampton, do you understand my concern that yeah. that you had killed two different people? I mean, to me, you know, when I read when I read your file, I said, "Oh my goodness, this man killed his daughter." And then I read, "You got only six years on a man, sixteen years on a manslaughter charge." I was a judge. I realized that there must have been some mitigation there. Mm -hmm. But I also realized as a father how devastating that must have been for you and your family to have killed your daughter. And then you get out of prison and you go back and you kill someone else. Do, do you see, can you tell me why I should feel comfortable voting to recommend that the governor commute your sentence? Yeah, sir, because when I came here the first time, we we did, I could I didn't have the opportunity to get an education. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. So I left like I came in here. Today, I have all that. I can read and write and I can do math, I can do basically anything that no one else can do. I put I tied myself to learn this because I don't want to leave here like I came here. So with all the stuff that I gathered, it made me the person I am. I'm a better person than what I was 40 years ago. Tell me a little bit about your family support. Who have you got supporting you on the outside? I have my wife and my son, Byron. My uh, uh, I call him my son, but uh, he's my nephew. And I have a uh, parole project. Warren, can you tell us anything about Mr. Hampton? Anything else about Mr. Hampton? One thing to add that he is re, uh, in remission for prostate cancer. Uh, like I said, he is 69 years old. He does have a good conduct record. His last report was in 2005, and he is a low risk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Hampton, you got in a, a fight with his brother, and then you shot. Yay? Yes, sir. Right. So, I mean, you, did you go there looking for the, uh, the brother and ended up running into Jane? I no, said the brother came looking for me. Okay, and, and you shot James in the back, correct? No. They said that you shot him in the back twice. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, how many children do you have? I got two. Do you still have a relationship with both of them? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rashad? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Hampton, let's go back to your manslaughter conviction. At the time, you said that you and your wife was arguing and tussling overnight. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you, and you fell on the bed. Yes, sir. Okay. Reading the report, your daughter was stabbed in the right eye and the stomach area. Your wife was stabbed in her left breast, her back, and, her, and she had stab wounds in her head. Did you, did you get stabbed at any time during that altercation? Yes, sir. Where did you get stabbed? She cut my throat. Okay. 
but it, you got to understand price. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And your wife was stabbed a total of three times. If you don't know, I don't know. Well, the report, the report say that you were stabbed in her left breast, her back, in the back of her head. I just want to know, basically, what was going on that you got stabbed, your wife got stabbed three times, and your daughter was stabbed fairly twice. We was fighting. I was fighting, trying to get the knife from him. I, I know. I know the baby got stabbed once. I'm not. A, I'm not aware that the baby was stabbed more than one time. What? The baby was stabbed once. After I got stabbed, I left out the house. I sat on the front step to wait for the cops, the police to come. I don't know what went on from that point on. I woke up at charity, and from there I went to the parish. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, um, Mr. Hunley, can we hear from the Parole Project? Thank you, Andrew Hunley, Louisiana Parole Project. Uh, appearing before the board today to inform you that if, if Mr. Hampton uh, is given early release in the near future, our organization is committed to provide reentry support for him uh, based on his age, based on the amount of time that he's served. Uh, based on the jobs that he's had in the institution, based on his disciplinary record, we, we feel confident that if he's given this opportunity um, for, the, for the rest of the years he has left, that he can be a law-abiding citizen with our support. Uh, we feel like he would have a, uh, <clears throat> a good transition back into the community with his family. Um, if, if he is given that opportunity, he will receive all the support that all of our clients receive. He'll have access to our staff social worker and he'll receive uh, re-entry support for a minimum of one year from one of our case managers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then we have Ms. Viola Hampton. Your, your microphone's on mute. Uh, good afternoon to the board. I'm Jerry's sister. And I love my brother. He always had my support. I'm here for him. And I also have Lionel my King. friend, Mr. King. He didn't get here in time to register. We live in a small community here in Alexander. And we always, Miss Harvey, this is Lionel, we always been friends. You know, we never lost friendship. Never. And I love my brother. He got my support. For 40 years, I drove the Angola rodeos, visit, and everything. Like I say, he made me strong. He's not the same person. So when I'm down and out, he calls me, and I feel better. But uh, that's all I got to say. I love my brother. And Thanks he me. got my support. Mr. King, was there anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I, I think. I think everybody needs a second chance. Y'all please just let him go. God forgives. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll hear from the opposition from the DA's office. Lay on the line. Yes, good afternoon. How, how are y'all doing? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, my name is Derek Johnson. I'm one of assistant district attorneys at Rep East Parish District Attorney's Office. We're still uh, strongly opposed to uh, any um, kind of commission of sins for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Jerry. Um, we believe Mr. Jerry, um, you know, he had a chance. I mean, given the facts of stating today, he had a chance when he first was convicted of uh, manslaughter and he got out and, and did the same thing again. I mean, two lives were taken. Um, two lives that, that, needed, that didn't need to be taken because of um, mistakes that he made in his life. And we don't believe that it'll be right for him to be released today. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, Mr. Hampton, before we turn it over to Ms. Hogan, is there something you'd like to say to us? Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to appear before you all. And I 
And the first thing I would like to say, I would like to, I would like to apologize to the King family, as well as the community, and as well as uh, law enforcement. Okay, thank you, sir. Ms. Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Nassa. Um, acknowledging that there are two very serious convictions in this case, nonetheless, Jerry Hampton is an ideal person to give an opportunity for release to. Um, there's a lot of things that Mr. Hampton does that he doesn't get certificates for. He is a man of few words. So if he was not able to tell you all the things that he does, um, there, there is plenty to tell. Um, in addition to the programs that were that were mentioned, Mr. Hampton learned how to read um, and graduated from literacy school just last year. He's working on obtaining his GED, which he could continue to make to work towards if he's granted release to the parole project. Um, Mr. Hampton also has a carpentry. He's able to build a house from uh, start to finish. He can frame. He can drywall. He can. He can do anything. He um, he has a, there's a certificate in his record from uh, on the job training, 12 years of carpentry work. Um, he, Mr. Hampton isn't just in remission for cancer. He also had a heart attack in 2017, which brought him into the hospital for a week. And after that heart attack, he was given a no duty status. So if Mr. Hampton didn't want to work or didn't want to do anything to better his prison community, he doesn't have to. But nonetheless works as an orderly, he mentors to people, he's very active in his church. Um, if, if, if somebody is needed to help pour cement, Mr. Hampton goes out and volunteers. He, um, whenever the ACA comes to inspect the hobby shop at Camp F, Mr. Hampton kicks everybody out and cleans the entire hobby shop by himself uh, because these are things that he loves to do. He takes pride in his work. He makes absolutely stunning, Woodwork. There are some examples of which that I have attached to my brief. There's like, um, he makes things out of wood. He makes things out of stainless steel, and he is frequently donating the proceeds, or he he donates he donates hobby crafts to uh, to charitable organizations. Um, if Mr. H for all of these reasons, Mr. Hampton's not the person that he was when he walked into prison 40 years ago, and I, I recognize that there are not just one conviction, it's, it's the prior one as well, but if this board's looking at the rehabilitation that Mr. Hampton has exhibited over the past 40 years, the likelihood of his success on release, which is high given his low risk of recidivism score, and the fact that when, like Jerry said for himself, whenever he went to prison the first time and came out, he was exactly the same as when he went in. He was um, uneducated, unable to read, unable to better himself, and now he has all those tools that he lacked when he first came to prison. Um, he has the full support of the parole project. His wife is here as well. Uh, they've known each other their entire lives. They were married and uh, reconnected in 2013. He has the, after this, the parole project, he has a transition plan that would not bring him back to Rapides Parish. He would live with his wife in Baton Rouge. Um, and given all of this, and also given the support of, of, the, of Mr. King, we would ask this board to commute Jerry Hampton's sentence to a term of years. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, uh, I have to vote, Mr. Marabella. Thanks. Mr. Hampton, uh, as I stated uh, at the beginning of, of my questioning of you, you've got an excellent prison record, you've done very well. Uh, so. Right. I, I, I read and I saw all of the things that you've accomplished, all of the work that you do, all of the things that uh, you've accomplished while you're there. Uh, again, my concern is, is your crimes. I often say, you know, that's just one factor that we factor in. We look at everything else. Uh, but in looking at your crimes, again, uh, uh, I would point out that the manslaughter charge, apparently the DA and the judge uh, realized that there was some mitigation there, how you were able to get a 16 year old sentence, 16 year sentence on a manslaughter charge. That's why we were, not, we were allowed to plead to that charge, I guess. Uh, 
Separately, both of these cases are sort of understandable, I guess. Uh, but together, they, they really do cause a bit of a problem to me. But on the second one, the one that uh, went to prison, you went to trial for and were convicted of, you've done 40 years. And uh, you've done well while you've been in prison. <laughs> Based upon the, the work that you've done, based upon uh, uh, your prison record, very good uh, disciplinary record, things that you've accomplished, I'm willing to take a chance on uh, My vote is going to be to recommend to the governor. Uh, you're 69 years of age. You've been in prison for 40 years. My recommendation is that uh, your sentence be commuted to uh, nine, to uh, 80 years. So good luck to you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, it's like Judge Maribel said, you know, it's not a one offense, it's two offenses, both very violent offenses. Uh, you know, one took the life of your daughter. Uh, so that's two two separate lives, three separate lives you've taken, and my vote today is to deny. Uh, Mrs. Jackson. Well, uh, Mr. Hampton, um, my vote would be to uh, grant a commutation. You have done uh, really well. Thank and you. I understand the situation where you went into prison the first time. You didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of things to better you. And you've had that over the last 42 years. Uh, you've done well with your uh, incarceration. And in my vote today would be to uh, grant with a recommendation of commutation to Andrew years. Mr. Rich. Madam Chair, Madam Chair Mr. Mr. Hampton, my vote is uh, based upon the age of the offender and the length of incarceration, and my vote is to commute the sentence to 80 years. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Hampton, uh, based on the remarks by Mr. Lionel King, my vote today is also to recommend the commutation to 80 years. Um, so you'd receive four votes to commute your sentence recommend that your sentence be commuted to 80 years. We'll make that recommendation in the buy-in. Good luck to you, sir. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you, ma'am. Is Mr. Freeman the uh, only voice of reason here? Although he said three lives, and as far as I'm aware, he this man has only taken two lives, so I don't know. That was a mistake, or I gotta tell you, I can't get I can't get over the fact that of his initial crime. I just can't. You, I mean, you heard the details of it. He he stabbed who is it at the time his wife in the head? I mean in the chest, and then his baby, his daughter was stabbed twice. And even when he's describing it, he is saying, Yeah, the baby was stabbed twice. Not my baby, not my child. The baby. And he said it without even breaking, without skipping a step. You know, the only thing I could think of it, the mitigating circumstances why he got 16 years was that if he went to trial, I think it, my guess is that it would have been really difficult to prove who, who actually stabbed the baby. And that would have been the reason they, they didn't get him on attempted homicide because they felt that 
he was in self-defense against his wife with the knife somehow, right? And in the melee, you know, their their daughter was stabbed twice. Whoop de doo. Oh, the DA and the judge, they 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 figured whoop de doo. I you can And then he gets out after serving eight years, and guess what he does? He shoots, what is it? Is it his sister's husband's brother in the back? And then he makes up a story that he had a gun. Even today at his own hearing, he was making stuff up. On June 7th, 1991... Facts, where are the facts? On August 20, 1982, the defendant fought Billy King at the Chicken Shack or Sugar Shack. After the fight, the defendant went to Sonia Quarters area where he was joined by Gerald Carr. John Hampton and another man. Near midnight, they returned to Chicken Shack Cafe. So they went back, probably got their weapons. They returned there. This is already premeditation. The defendant fired two or three shots, killing him. Killing Billy King's brother. That's who we saw talk, his brother. After the shooting, he turned himself into the police. They don't really go into any other details, though. He claims he did have a gun. His sister took it. Maybe it's true, but I have no reason to believe him. He even even, <laughs> even says that, well, in Louisiana, they don't have a self-defense law. It's like, really? <laughs> what have you been, what are you saying? Miss Mirabella's like, yes, they do. You stab your own daughter to death. You put yourself in a situation where you're in the bed with the knife. You claim you, you're sober. You claim that you never done anything. I think another lie. I, I don't know why they just let him get away with that. But fine, let's say it was true. It's, it's just worse. He's, he's, he's. He, go... he goes into bed and gets into a fight. Like, who knows what happened? It, it, it's so easily he could have been attacking his, his wife and she's defending herself and, and getting, and, and, you know, somehow the DA and the, and the judge just, like, let it go. They probably, he probably literally got away with murder and attempted murder. I, I just don't see a scenario where she's attacking him. I just don't. Who knows? Who knows how that went down? In 
was it 19 uh, there's just no information on that case it was a 1970 something in louisiana I just don't get it. I don't think someone you can't. You got your second chance. And man, someone go. They killed their daughter, and then as it, it just doesn't affect him because he gets back out, and he and he's still willing to take a gun and take a life. You know, a, a healthy person who takes a life, they don't pick up a gun again. They don't want anything to do with taking a life. They don't. But to shoot someone, and not only that, but, but it's, it's you're shooting your sister's brother-in-law? Because you're mad? There's so many things wrong with this hearing, but the idea that he would get another chance, I, I don't, I don't buy into it. I didn't see anything impressive about this hearing. I think he lied from start to finish. It's hard to believe that that he's that he's a dead cold sober. I just have a hard time believing that. And and if it was, it just makes it worse. So you can get in a situation where you would make such dumb decisions and be completely sober. And he just showed no remorse. I didn't get a sense of any remorse. You stab your own child twice while you're stabbing your mother of your child in the head. And he's not crying talking about that. He doesn't shed a tear. His voice doesn't crack. And he says in reference to it, the baby. The baby. You think that he should be out and free again? I don't care if he's 69 years old. That's young enough. Look at him. He's in great shape. I don't get it. And he's married. Who's to say he doesn't get into another fight with his wife? Right? Is that what they said? I think they said he's married. Maybe, maybe I missed that part. I, I don't know. I, I just don't, you, you know, man. Well, look, the, 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 what needs to happen is governor needs to sign off on it. And the governor might look and say, no way, this is too, I'm not, I can't do this at a good conscience. Maybe he'll, but maybe he'll do it. It wasn't unanimous though. Mr. Freeman saved the day. I, the unlikely hero. You don't see that often. Yeah. Well, you've seen it here. You've seen it. You've seen it here. And we can only hope if he does get out that he... doesn't lose his temper again. Doesn't get in a fight with someone. 
like that. I'll let you go.